Hello and Happy New Year. This is Oliver Garden. I'm the Dean of the School of Veterinary Medicine here at LSU, LSU Vet Med, with another edition, the first of the year, of 3Q with Oliver. It's a great pleasure to recognize members of our community, students, staff, faculty, alumni, who espouse the values of the school namely innovation, compassion and integrity. And it's a real joy and honor today to have as my guest Dr. Keros Williams, who is a professor of anesthesiology and the clinical service lead for shared services here at LSU Vet Med in our hospital. So let's take it away. Dr. Keros, really uh, great to have you with me today. Thank you very much for agreeing to do this. Uh, I have always admired anesthesiologists. You have to deal with all species, whether tiny, exotic companion animals, all the way to food animals or zoo animals in our case. We have great exotics and zoo program. So tell me, you mentioned that anesthesiology was in your soul from being a child. How did that evolve and how did you come from growing up in Brazil to coming to Baton Rouge and you've been here since 2007. So tell us about your journey, please. Sure. Uh, actually, anesthesia was a delight, discovery. Uh, I, I grew up in a farm, in right. a big cattle farm, yeah. and I always yeah. enjoy being with my dad mm -hmm. in the corral with calves and uh, all kinds of animals. Like, mm -hmm. I was, I like to have everything in my parents' uh, household and for my parents because yes. they would need to deal with me and my animals. So since very young, I knew that I want to be a vet. Right. But I was deeply impassioned with horses because my dad had a lot of horses. Mm -hmm. So I went to the vet school imagining, oh, desiring to be an equine uh, internist, okay. do yeah. with uh, medicine, equine medicine. Absolutely. And that was through the whole vet school. And after I graduated, I pursued that. I went to Jockey Club of Sao Paulo, that is a huge institution in the middle of Sao Paulo. It has right. more than a thousand horses. Wow. So I went there to do an externship mm -hmm. because I wanted at the end of the year to take the exam for the residency that they have in the uh, veterinary clinics mm -hmm. of the Jockey Club of Sao Paulo. So when I went there, I needed to um, follow every service for two months right. and one of the services was uh, equine surgery okay. that I did not like and I did not care for <laughs> so the first thing that I did when I went in was okay I'm going to stay on the head of the horse okay. and usually the head of the horse is the anesthesiologist Absolutely, yes. so I start to chat with him and things went very easy and like I start to enjoy, he start to discuss pharmacology of the drugs and ev everything came very easy to me. While I was like I was struggling with medicine and feel that something was missing, mm -hmm. with an anesthesia was like just coming and I was enjoying and I wanna read the articles, I wanna read the papers and the discussion with him, the anesthesiologist at the time was like so productive that it really, really did feel like that somebody turned on a light in a dark tunnel. And I was like, whoa, this is for me. So you found your passion actually yes. on, the, on the job, as it were. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Great. he was like, you have anesthesia in your soul. You must pursue right. anesthesia residency, okay. not the jockey club residency. Okay. So he put me in contact with the big figures in anesthesia in Brazil mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. There were like four people. So I spent the next year doing the anesthesia externships to be able to understand what was the speciality mm -hmm. and get to study because the residence in Brazil, like the vet school, you need to actually take an exam. Right. So right, right. you only get in by your grade, your I score see, right. in the exam. Okay. So I did that uh, in November was the exam. I did the exam. I passed okay. and actually was the most prestigious residency in Estesia. I was super proud wow. and super happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did my residency two years and then a year of master. And then it was like, what is the next? You know, always like, what is the next that next I can go? Yes, absolutely. And the next was coming here. Okay. And I came with no English. Was and how did that jump occur? Did you have a contact or how did it 
I'm yes. intrigued, but that's a big yes, jump, yes, really. Yes. I had a friend that was at the time was here in Texas uh, in an equine mm -hmm. private practice, and um, he just like this is how you come, how the way how you come, the immigration process was all like very well. Um, detailed for me, so I came basically first as a tourist mm -hmm. and then I made contact. Uh, from Texas he went to Knoxville, Tennessee, the right, University right, right. of Knoxville. So then I finally I was able to get the residence in there. First I worked as a volunteer because I had no English. Mm -hmm. So I for two years I was there in and out. Uh, mm -hmm. Working as a working now, I was a volunteer. I was not really working. So then they finally decided to open a residency in anesthesia. They did not have. So I was thrilled because I was the first resident. Wow! Congratulations. For the College yeah. of yeah. Veterinary Trailblazer Medicine. Trailblazer in many ways. Yes. Yeah. You know, first program it has the downs, mm -hmm. but I was very happy with what I could accomplish. I did not have my English master yet. I don't think that they still have, but I can talk. Uh, but yes, it, it was it was great. But that is how I ended up being here. Yeah, it's uh, fantastic. And in my mind, it was like actually doing maybe a PhD right, until right. I learned to stay in the university and teaching for anesthesia at least was more important to achieve a residency right, than right. a PhD. Indeed, so yeah. yeah, after I did the residency, I was like, okay, I don't think that I'm going through a PhD since I have a master, I think I'm okay. Right, but right. I almost went and a yeah, a PhD. Yeah. Well, that certainly takes courage, my goodness, not only to change culture from one to another, but in a country for which the native language, you, you, you hadn't had a mastery upon coming. Gosh, that's, that's impressive. So obviously, since you came to LSU in 2007, things have changed a lot in anesthesia. It's progressed, it's safer, we can do so many more things uh, in a safer way and more expediently and r more rapidly. Tell us about some of the progress and advances in your field. I mean, I'm sure we'd have to spend all day, yeah. but just a few, <laughs> the, the things that stand out in your mind. A few things. Um, I think like evidence-based, um, um, medicine is one. We have way more clinical studies right now. Right. With, and uh, we're doing even, some of them as well. Yes, yes, and we do that. Through that, you learn a lot. But I cannot discount the monitoring, how they are more refined now. When I did my residence in Brazil, we would, uh, it was like not every anesthesia monitor that had capnography. Right, right. Capnography is like gold standard now for circulation. Mm -hmm. um, we, like full socks was not something that was uh, very well spread, uh, spread around uh, the practitioners. Mm -hmm. We know that we need to have you know, full sock symmetry, ECG. So the, the monitoring of anesthetized animal is so refined these right. days. Uh, when I started here, we did not have uh, an anesthesia ventilator, the one that comes with the anesthesia machine that had a speedometer. Right. It, now we have a speedometry on anesthetized stenotomies, mm -hmm. for example. So you see how you are ventilating the lung. Uh, it's it's is a gold standard for anesthetized animals. Oh, right. uh, drugs. When I started in anesthesia, we had uh, halotan. Mm -hmm. It's not even yes, used sir. anymore. Indeed. So we have isoforan, sevoforan. Tiva was not something that was actually well known. And now, maybe I, you want to spell out that uh, is, acronym? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Total uh, intravenous anesthesia. Right. Right. So, like with the advance of having proper fall or faxalone, mm -hmm. you can have animal anesthetized without inhalants, right. so without gas, mm -hmm. and have it just under injectables. Yep. Uh, or you can do the PIVA that is partial uh, intravenous, so you can have inhalants and the injectables right, at the right, same right. time. Right, right. So a blended so approach. Yes, it's a balanced anesthesia. So you use less of each uh, drug, so you have less side effects of right. those drugs because you're using lower uh, dosages. Yeah. Um, reporting, I think when I start anesthesia, 
we, we would not report errors, we would not go back and debrief. Absolutely. Yeah. At these days we do and we learn so much. Mm -hmm. What did it go wrong on this uh, anesthesia case? Um, checklist we have in now each animal before they even is premeded, before they're sedated, we need to go and check like which patient is this, has a ID band, uh, is the anesthesia machine checked, mm -hmm. uh, is, is all the valves that's supposed to be open are open, um, is which procedure we're doing, mm -hmm. uh, which like for example, which leg is the right, is the left. So we have checklist where we are safer. Absolutely, yes. And, and you teach all of that to your students too, so they come away with those skills and the monitoring is obviously a lot more advanced, but the basic skills, history, physical examination, remain, remain steadfast. So obviously you have a really key relationship with the surgeons. You work hand in glove, you have to have that synergism. Tell us maybe about a recent case or your general philosophy on how to keep that dialogue going, especially when things get tense. You know, some of your anesthesias, and that's why the cases come here, are complicated, they are very fragile cases. So how do you navigate and manage that? The communication is the key, right? Mm -hmm. When we are in the OR, on the operating room, and there are the anesthesiologist, the surgeon, but also you have students, you have technicians, Absolutely. you have Our residents yeah, or yeah. interns, so you need to communicate all the time. And I can give you an example about that. Uh, Actually, it was during the Christmas week. Right. Uh, we had uh, a more complex chylothorax dog mm -hmm. that needed to go to surgery. Mm -hmm. It was a stenotomy, uh, and I had Dr. Alisa Saint Blanc right. doing uh, with Dr. Cloth. And we went, she approached the chest, and you know, is a, is a surgery in the chest, so you know that the animal is not going to breathe, you need to ventilate. So that is where the monitoring help us mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have like all, you need to think in advance what may go wrong That's so you are right. prepared right. for. Yeah. So even though that we prepare, sometimes things, things they don't a, go the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so uh, when Dr. S well, Dr. Sandblank opened the chest, it was, I would say, nasty chest because it had uh, it was a chylothorax, so we had a lot of uh, uh, fibrinogenic uh, material, it had like pus, mm -hmm. but also she needed to uh, take the caudal long lobe, mm -hmm. uh, so she needed to remove, to reset. Right, right, right. And That's a major we, surgery. Yeah. Yes, it's a major surgery. So with that, she needed to physically manipulate the lungs and the heart, and the body does not like that. So, so throughout that whole surgery was like a very uh, clear communication between me and her. It's like, hey, you were holding the heart now for too long and the lungs too. So I could not ventilate mm -hmm. effectively for the animal while she was holding. And of course, she knows, she understands and she will let it go. So we would see like all the parameters that were very abnormal would come back to normal so kind of the dog will come back to life mm -hmm. so at the end we end up having this uh, agreement that she will keep doing her surgery for like two three minutes mm -hmm. at a time and then I would have my time mm -hmm. that the animal will recover for mm -hmm. those three minutes so we spend a good time in surgery doing that she would uh, get the access of the caudal lobe of the lung for two, three minutes, and then she'll let it go, take her hands from the thorax, and I would see all my parameters, the patient parameters going back to normal. Yes, yes. Uh, Obviously a very good example of, of uh, you know, working in tandem and working together. And one final question, this is one close to the heart of many, many people who love LSU, is of course our wonderful majestic and thrilling mascot, the only live tiger mascot in the US, Mike. And you were involved in some rather challenging scenarios with Mike Six during his radiation therapy. So maybe give us an insight into that because I can't imagine a pressure, a, a situation more pressured than that 
in which you've got literally an animal celebrity undergoing major therapy. So tell us about that, please. Getting invited to help anesthetize Mike Six was a big thing. Absolutely. And it was, it was big because his first anesthesia did not go that well. Not the anesthesia itself, the recovery. Right. Mike, Mike Six took too long to recover from his first anesthesia. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Baker at the time, he came to me and said like, look, I need you to help me to come up with a better anesthetic protocol. I would right. not say even better, with a different- An alternative, yeah. Yeah, alternative yeah, yeah, yeah. anesthetic protocol so that we can, if needed, we can anesthetize Mike again mm -hmm. And, not, and I would not have like a heart attack knowing that he's not going to recover. Right, right. Um, and the problem is that, like you said, Mike was a celebrity. Mike is a celebrity. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to like prepare ourselves in advance. And if you think that you are prepared, you need to go back and prepare a little more, oh, make sure that everything is, is set and uh, ready to go. Uh, and double check and have plan B, C, D, Absolutely. all of that. So I was lucky that Mike Six was well trained to uh, go in his night house and get in the path of the scale. Mm -hmm. And on that scale, they can close kind of a cage. And he would allow me to hand inject him. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was not uh, shy of needles, mm -hmm. so that was a big change from a dart, from Absolutely. the first anesthesia yes, to yes, yes. hand injecting him. And knowing pharmacology, pharmacokinetics of the drugs, I was able to do a combination of drugs that I did not use. To, I did not need to use anesthetic itself, mm -hmm. so I did not use ketamine. That is so heavily uh, used on exotics. Um, and with that, we actually were able to anesthetize Mike again for more, four times. Wow, and his recovery awesome. was like fast Smooth, and yeah. his move and yeah. everybody was happy. Absolutely. Everybody like was breathing, like with relief that he actually took well. Absolutely. Well, all of our patients I know you handle as though they were celebrities, but certainly the pressure was on for Mike Six. Any other final comments before we close? Well, I would say, yes, we have a beautiful anesthesia team here at LSU. We do indeed, yes. Yeah, uh, we are four anesthesiologists. Uh, we all were, were like uh, formally trained, uh, diplomate by the uh, American College of Veterinary Anesthesia and Analgesia. Uh, we collaborate so much with each other. Um, we have house officers, we have interns we have residents so we actually forming the next uh, absolutely leaving level, a legacy yes, yes of um, anesthesiologist we are on top of what's coming what is new at these days we are doing a lot of um, uh, ultrasound guided local regional anesthesia what is like is the best for pain management in animals and decreasing the amount of other systemic drugs like opioids. Uh, we have that is going very well. All the anesthesiologists are doing uh, ultrasound guided. So our team is great. It's awesome. I, I know that, but I'm glad you said that because it, it certainly warrants repetition. And thank you for leading the team and also leading uh, the hospital in your shared service role. So thank you very much. I've really enjoyed speaking to you. There it is, another edition of 3Q with Oliver and watch out for the next edition coming soon. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.